As most people know, if you watch the TV stations in Oregon, every time there's a flood or a wind event, the TV stations come down to Tillamook. Instead of being known for trees, cheese, and ocean breeze, we're known for the, oh, you're the community that floods every year. And I don't want to be known as the community that floods every year. Tillamook County is a picturesque region located on the northern Oregon coast. The county has experienced severe flooding throughout its history, which has cost the community millions of dollars in property damage as well as ecosystem destruction. Following the devastating flooding in 2006, Oregon Governor Ted Kulingoski designated the problem as an Oregon Solutions Project. Tillamook Bay has five rivers running into it, and, and at certain times they all flood, sometimes all at the same time, and sometimes bring more water than others. But it, it floods all of the lowland uh, here where we're standing across the river. This all goes underwater. North of Tillamook City goes underwater. East of Tillamook on Highway 6, the farmland goes underwater. It's a big area. It affects a lot of businesses, a lot of farms, and even a lot of homes. Flooding is, is common here, but deep water can be bad news. In 1996, we had about two foot of snow up in those forested mountains, and then we got a warm rain. Normally, when the water comes up and the tide goes out, then the water starts going down, but it didn't go down. It stayed up for four days. In February 1996, rainstorm, on, on February 6th, in one hour, at the remote automatic weather station, which is up the Wilson River, it rained seven, over seven inches in one hour. And that's what came down. When the tide went out, the water just kept coming. And then there were more 98, 99, 2001, and then November of 2006, we had, particularly on the Wilson River north of Tillamook, uh, water was in barns there. It affects a lot of people, businesses, agriculture, as well as homeowners, and can be very costly to everybody. We haven't lost any lives yet, fortunately, and we hope we never do. But we're not going to stop flooding by any means, but if we can move it out more quickly and maybe hold it down in some areas, that's, that's what I think we have a chance of doing over time. Governor Kulingoski asked County Commissioner Mark Labhart and State Senator Betsy Johnson to co-convene groups most affected by the flooding. Former Tillamook City Manager Dick Townsend provided process support from the Oregon Solutions Program. After uh, the November flood of 2006, the community said that they wanted to try to come together and figure out how they could minimize or reduce the impact of that flooding. Uh, there were three parties that petitioned the governor's office for it to be Oregon Solutions Project. Uh, one was the Tillamook County Commission, one was the city of Tillamook, and the other was uh, Senator Betsy Johnson. And in their letter, they requested that uh, state agencies, through the governor's direction, assist the community in coming together to find out uh, and trying to decide what projects they could put together uh, to reduce the flooding. There are 29 individuals on the project team for the, uh, the Tillamook Oregon Solutions uh, process. Uh, that um, represents 23 different agencies. And they range uh, from one spectrum being three federal agencies, NOAA Fisheries, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and uh, the Corps of Engineers. And uh, all the way through a number of state agencies, I believe there are seven state agencies involved, and the community, and the community means business people. Uh, the, uh, there is a district called the Tillamook Bay Habitat uh, Estuary Improvement District. Uh, there are the city and the county representatives, uh, the county hospital, uh, the, the county uh, Tillamook Bay Community College. So it's a wide array of, of partners, including also the Farm Bureau and the Soil Water Conservation District. On October 31st, on Halloween, uh, the Tillamook uh, Project uh, came to its first uh, chapter of conclusion, and that is the Declaration of Cooperation was signed. Uh, this is a group with tremendous diversity in their interests. For years, some of the people at the table did not speak to each other. This is the first time all of these parties, 23, 24 parties, have gotten at the table. They begin shaking hands and talking about partnerships. And it took us three meetings, uh, probably three months, um, to 
come up and everybody to agree to a goal statement and they believed in it and they still do and that is to to minimize the flooding impacts in Tillamook and as they are doing that to improve the economy and uh, to improve the environment. As a solutions project the community had a structure and process for joint efforts to determine the best courses of action that would diminish the impacts of flooding in the Tillamook Basin. There is no silver bullet for the flooding problem in Tillamook County. We had a recent feasibility study done by the Corps of Engineers and it was through that computer modeling done in the study that we learned about the 33 different cells that the floodplain consists of and because of those 33 different cells, flood mitigation will be a series of small actions taken throughout the floodplain instead of one big solution. So Oregon Solutions is going through a process of identifying the priority projects and then addressing those one by one. Two projects in particular are, we're moving out on very quickly. One is the what we call the Dean Dirt Pile project and it's a it's a large pile of about 12,000 cubic yards of dirt and debris that is in the floodway. Not in the flood plain, but in the floodway. And the difference between that is, is that's where the floodwaters go when we have a flood in North Tillamook. It goes right through that area. You've got 10 or 12,000 cubic yards of material. And what happens is the water comes up, hits that big pile of dirt, spreads out around there, and then starts spreading into the businesses. And so that's a high priority project for us is to remove that material. And the second high priority project for us is two spillway projects. When the water uh, fills what we call cells, I call them bathtubs, but it can't get out of these bathtubs. So what we're doing is we're, we're cutting a hole in the side of the bathtub and putting in a spillway. And they're, they're very large spillways. And so when the water gets up to a certain level, it'll spill over this spillway and get into the bay quicker. And so the duration of the floods will not be as long. One of the keys to success in the community's collaborative approach was the joint leadership of the co-conveners. Having two co-conveners that like each other, that communicate well with each other, that are in constant contact, I think has been exceptionally useful in this particular Oregon Solutions project. We came in coordinated, well prepared, we understood what the arguments were on both sides, we understood what goal we wanted to achieve, and I think we were able to move through. I think one of the other role of co-convener or convener, depending on how the project is structured, is to be the champion for the process. And I have found that to be one of the most rewarding aspects of being a convener or a co-convener. Um, I, I think that when the co-conveners, as Mark and I do, clearly understand the value of the process, that we're then there as the advocate and the champion to make sure that the process unfolds the way that it should. And we're there to remind the participants around the table about the more global aspect of Oregon Solutions. In this instance, for example, to be quite concrete about it, we were working with a finite amount of money from the legislature. Part of the job that we had specifically in today's meeting, and, and that will continue on, is to remind folks about the leveraging capacity of Oregon Solutions, mm -hmm. and that when the finite amount of money is gone, it really isn't gone as long as we have maintained the ability to leverage our initial seed money into other money. And so we're there as champions for the process and advocates for the Oregon Solution way of making decisions. You've got to make sure in these kind of robust discussions that all points of view are heard, and that we move forward together. And um, sometimes in, in uh, I think, my enthusiasm to get something done, I want to race past that intermediate point that says all perspectives have value. We need to hear out everybody. We need to stay on task, as Commissioner Labhart says. But I think um, my advice to co-conveners of other Oregon Solutions projects would be patience and the ability to sit through long meetings, making sure that everyone is heard so that they feel included and, and that their concerns are satisfied. And so I think we have a lengthy list of accomplishments that have flowed out of the work up to this point. And those accomplishments as they occur, I think sustain and build momentum uh, and, and general acknowledgement, although not everybody may agree on every element, 
overall there is a patina of success surrounding this project and I think that patina of its success people want to associate with it. They want to move on to the next thing. They want to feel as though their contributions have yielded on the ground projects and that's exactly what we've been able to do here. Thank you.